Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. You would normally think of PLM, or Product Lifecycle Management, as a major undertaking with lots of data migration and consultants at a considerable cost. But what we're looking at is PLM at Walmart pricing, so to speak. It's Autodesk PLM 360, cloud hosted, delivered in the Software as a Service or SaaS style, available for subscriptions at $25 to $75 per user per month. I'm going to explore the different modules that come with it using a test account provided by Autodesk as a courtesy, and I'll bring you along on my journey. So have a look at it. There's no installation, no software. Your browser is your client and your interface. All you have to do is sign in and you get to your home screen or your landing page. This is the dashboard, the home screen, showing a series of report as pie charts and columns. It's an editable environment, so you can add or remove the reports you'd like to see as you land on this page. You may also change some settings, like how many days in advance you'd like the system to alert you when something is behind deadline. Adding new users is pretty straightforward, and once you have added someone and placed him or her in a certain group, later the user becomes available for you to select and assign tasks to. Let's have a look at the environment where you can examine the items, the bill of materials. Hovering your mouse over an item shows you a floating pane with more details when the item was created, who created it, where it was used, and so on. And whenever that is relevant, you may also hit the Visualize button in the corner to turn your columns and chart data into a flowchart, showing relationships between different items. In the change order environment, for instance, when you request a change, you'll notice that all the other items that will be affected by your change are also queried, listed, and displayed. There is a search box at the corner that lets you find items by keywords, dates, and other attributes. Now here is the workflow editor a Java-based applet that pops up on demand. This lets you edit how you route your approvals and change orders and so on. There are some ready-made reports that I can generate as graphs or as Excel spreadsheets. This is, of course, just an initial look, but I'll have to say, for the price you're paying, you're getting quite a generous list of functions. At first glance, the program setup is very easy. You could start using the program in minutes with little or no training. The web-based environment is low maintenance, so you won't have to invest a lot of IT maintenance costs in it. The editable setup gives you the chance to customize what you see in each operational tab. Well, Autodesk has said that its PLM system will be accessible from a variety of devices. So far, though, no mobile app for PLM 360 on the Apple App Store yet. Presumably, some are already in development. Perhaps this is just an expectation prompted by my affection for social media, like Facebook or Google+. Even though it's not critical to decision-making and product lifecycle management, I wish PLM 360's environment is much more multimedia-driven with thumbnails of DWG attachments, pop-up previews of product photos, and previews of web pages and URLs listed in supplier list, and maybe even short biographies and photos of users added to the system. This is, after all, PLM 360 1.0, so I'm sure a lot of refinements are on the way. At one point, Auditor CEO Carl Bass was not exactly a PLM believer. 
He went so far as to say PLM is a solution in search of a problem. Mr. Bass has obviously reversed his position and to be frank, Autodesk PLM 360 with its low barrier for entry and its ease of use could become a problem for many other PLM vendors selling the same solution at a much higher cost. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong with a 5-minute roundup of PLM 360.